let's talk about the meme supercycle honeypot. Um, now, I just want to get you all in the rough frame of mind of the typical crypto punter, okay? I, I need you to all like feel as though you're these type of people, uh, just so you can feel the pain and the raw emotion that most of cri crypto Twitter feels. So there's a very good um, handle called Coin Fashions. It's just unbelievable, some of this stuff. I'm just going to read them, okay? Just, just feel the pain and the emotion. Have lost everything, have 10 soul left, but I can't, I can't trade for shit. 2 million down, was 5 million up at one point, but I sold all my soul for memes. Gambled, chased, and drained twice. Lol, meow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <coughs> Even though my life is going fine, I can't help, help but feel like a failure. I have constant anxiety and PTSD from losing my money last cycle. Yet I'm convinced I can make it to 100K this cycle and then pull the money out and make it work for the rest of my life. You need a lot more for that. Um, I, I also tell myself that I have to make the best out of the upcoming alt season because I constantly know how much I would ha have had now if I simply stayed in Bitcoin. It's a never-ending torture, but I keep telling myself it's going to be worth it while constantly having fear of losing it all and underperforming. My only dream is to make it out of this cycle with a good amount of money and living a peaceful life again. I genuinely don't care. I'm just going to say it. I'm a pretty well-known influencer, KOL, key opinion leader, <clears throat> on Solana, Twitter, and I dump the fuck out of my bag on my followers, and I don't regret any of it. I'm here to make my bag. I don't give a solitary, sorry, um, about them and their money. My wife and I invested $200,000 into Bitcoin at an average price of $8,000. In the 2018 bear market, I took the decision to sell all the Bitcoin at just over 6K and invest it into XRP at 52 cents. <laughs> Fast forward six years and our total investment would have been worth 1.7 million, but instead we are stuck with an XRP bag which has gained less than 4% in six years. And our overall investment is at least is a 23% loss. I blame the YouTube shills and my stupidity sucks. I had nearly 200K, I capitulated all my bags at the Pico bottom for 70K and traded it down to 15K in July slash August. Have since then watched all the coins I was in hit multiple X's above my entry. Would be worth over half a million dollars now, but instead I'm married to one bag, which is worth 22K that I don't believe in, dis despite posting like I do. <laughs> this is more common than you think, folks. Don't worry. This, this, this. I can't take it anymore. Everyone said October. So yesterday I went 100X long on Bitcoin to front, front run y'all. And now Bitcoin is down and I got liquidated. I lost all my money. With my last 10K USD, I bought that stupid hippo coin everyone was posting about. <laughs> and now I'm down on that too. <clears throat> Crypto just isn't for me, I guess. This is an a, endless stream of pain on, on Twitter. Please look into it. Because we have all done that at some point. I've been there, you've been there, we've all been there, probably multiple points. Um, and so, again, the theme today is low information versus high information. A lot of, let's say, low information crypto people, they'll do like intense amount of focus and research early on. They'll fixate on something like Ripple or Cardano or whatever, go, oh my God, this is amazing. And then they'll stop their research and then they'll just be moon boys of that particular ecosystem forever and never look at anything else, okay? We've all been there, okay? I'm not saying we're high and mighty and we're better. We're, we're, none of us are better than any of these confessions. Um, but that's typically what happens. You become moon boys and you don't pivot. In crypto, you have to pivot. You have to flush your portfolio down the drain at the end of every cycle. And with meme coins, it's very much like this. Like all the power, all the network infrastructure, everything is there with Bitcoin and, and bigger projects. But meme coins, you just see the fruits or the leaves, a lot, or a lot more sort of leaf than substance, if that makes sense. And Twitter and YouTube 
really is a massive echo chamber. Now, I was living my merry life, just doing my thing, and then literally, over the last couple of months, I'm not exaggerating, I had at least, at least 100 direct messages about this guy called Murad. And I was like, who the fuck is this Murad guy? I, like, I don't watch anyone on YouTube other than Elon Musk. That, that's all I, I do on YouTube. Elon, maybe, and, and the All In podcast. That's pretty much all I watch on YouTube. I don't follow any YouTubers or like uh, Twitter uh, crypto people. Maybe Michael Saylor, I follow him as well. And so this Murad, 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 I, I was like, who is this Murad guy? And then I finally like went, okay, I'm gonna spend half an hour watching this video because everyone just kept sending me this, th this link. Meme super cycle, why are you not in memes, Siam? I'm like, I am in memes, I just don't talk about it. Um, and it's this guy. So he had a presentation at Token 20, uh, 2049 in Singapore and he's gone viral. And I watched it thinking, right, I'm gonna sit here and I'm probably gonna disagree with everything he has to say. To be completely honest, I probably agree with 80% of the things he said. So please don't think I'm, I'm knocking him. I'm not knocking him at all. All I'm giving you is my personal context on this theory, because that's all these bloody direct messages keep asking for. So I'm just doing future Siam a favor. I'm gonna send these people the link for this video. Next time someone says about Murad, I'll send them my link. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> So yeah, I actually agree with a lot of the stuff he says. It's that 20% where we do differ quite a lot. Now, so here's some of the stuff he says. So he's basically saying meme coins are great, yada, 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 and that, but, but most altcoins, and uh, they end up like this. I mean, this is nothing new to us. We've seen this. Pretty much every crypto all of us have ever touched has probably done something like this at one stage or another. Bitcoin has done this. The thing with Bitcoin is it does this, and it, but at higher increments time and time again. But a lot of altcoins, they just die after this. And that's because you, know, you have all the pre-seed stuff. And like on the trading pubs every week, we've talked about token allocation. And whenever you have that pie chart and it's a multi-segment pie chart and basically like 50% of early investors get the token, uh, it's like, no, you just need to run away. Um, and I just, just went back to thinking about survivorship bias. So. Survivorship biases, it really became a thing uh, after World War II. And you had all these World War II bombers coming home absolutely peppered um, in bullet holes. And they're like, how the hell did you make it back from Berlin to Kultusch or, or whatever it may be? Um, and so what happened is that, oh my Lord. So some clever person, not clever, went, oh wow, I, what we need to do is we need to rebalance some of the, the shielding on the airplanes and we need to put more shielding here, more shielding where all the bullet holes are, um, and then we should be even better. What happened? More bombers didn't make it home. There was a very short period where we actually lost way more bombers than actually made it home. And they were like, wait a minute, what's going on here? We, we upgraded the armor on these, these aircraft um, but in fact, it's the other way around. The reason these aircraft were coming back and managing to come back is because they had uh, sufficiently armored the, the, the critical point of failures of the aircraft, i.e. the cockpit. You take the pilot out, you're buggered. You, you take the engines out, you're buggered. You take out you know, the, the weak part of the tail structure, you're buggered. You take, uh, they had um, uh, self-healing um, fuel tanks and stuff. So what they temporarily did was focus on the wrong thing. And so they went back to the old arm ring, and guess what? You can take off chunks of the wing and it doesn't really make much of a difference. So, so this was really where the, 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 the term survivorship bias came into play. But it's changed. In the world of wealth gen generation, survivorship bias is just like this meme. This, this is an old picture, by the way. So this is essentially someone who's multimillionaire that's made their money with lottery tickets. So it's like saying, hey, everyone, all you need to do to get rich is just buy lottery tickets every week. Just buy a lottery every week and you'll be fine. Um, and then you'll make money just like I've done. But how many people have bought lottery tickets and haven't made any money? That is survivorship bias. All you're t hearing is the winner, the, the happy lottery winner, that's it not the tens of millions of people that have lost on the lottery. Now, survivorship bias is very, very prevalent here in the meme super cycle, 
Murad is a lottery winner. Oh, no, that, that's no, I take that back. He is a very skilled crypto practitioner who's done incredibly well for himself with memes. OK, he's not typically he's not a lottery winner. He's, he's a very skilled practitioner. But what happens is that you see all the other people that have won the, the meme lottery and the whatever. Um, and so you just have that in the back of your mind, survivorship bias. And not just with crypto practitioners, but memes themselves. There are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of memes out there. And the ones that hit it big are the ones that you hear. You don't hear of the ones that never launch. Uh, you just hear of Bonk and Whiff and Doge and Shib and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, stop. Poll time. <laughs> Was GameStop a big retail win or a big VC big boy win? Hands up for retail win. Can't be a safe environment. <laughs> okay, hands up if you think VC big boy win. Interesting. Okay. Now, obviously, I can only provide sort of partial proof and whatnot, but in my opinion, GameStop was a massive VC big boy win. But what do you hear on social media? Oh, is the retail market giving you know, the, the fingers to, to the VCs? No. What actually happened was one VC, one fund, got in over their heads, and the other VCs it tore that fund to shreds. So when people think of different levels of money, they think, oh, all the bankers, they're all friends. You know, it's retail versus bankers. It's not. The big boys, they're all fighting each other as well. A smaller hedge fund will be fighting against a bigger hedge fund. Banks will be fighting other banks. Central banks are fighting the banks constantly. Uh, and all VCs are fighting each other. And they are cutthroat. So if a bunch of VCs, one VC is, is bleeding, they will sacrifice that VC and, and tear it to shreds. Um, a bit like if, you know, a stampede, uh, like a, <coughs> what buffalo will do when they're being chased is that they'll sacrifice some of the young. So adult buffalo will kick out some of the younger buffalo to fall over and let the wolves take the young kid to survive, help uh, save, the, save the herd. Pretty brutal, right? But um, <clears throat> that's exactly the same with, with the VCs. So one VC got absolutely nuked with GameStop. But all the other VCs profited, profited massively. They made billions more than retail. Yeah, some, some retail made money. But what did they do? They held on to it and never sold. So a lot of the retail that made money, they actually never liquidated and cashed in, realized that capital. Um, I, I've just seen your, your shirt, and I really want that shirt now. <laughs> yes. Um, where did you get that? Homemade. You got to sell that shit. <laughs> I would wear it. I'd, yeah. So humor me here. Suppose I am correct. Suppose. So who who do you really think is winning here with this meme super cycle? Okay. So I've I've peered behind the the, the veil in in the, in the big boy world several times over the last sort of ten years. Um, it's not the retail market that is pumping uh, memes. This is coordinated, orchestrated VC slaughter of retail. I'm telling you now. All that's happening is VC, <laughs> you can tell this is AI made, because sharks don't fly. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so here's what's happening. Let's say. This is VC Summit 2024, and every single person here is a VC uh, or a fund manager of some sort. Okay, it's a closed room; it's not being recorded, um, and this is one of our yearly get-togethers of you know how can we get more alpha, how can we get more edge, um, what winning opportunities are there. And by the way, if you don't think there are VC meetings like this, there there, there are. I, I promise you. So let's just say this VC Summit 2024 with you know, closed doors, no cameras, nothing. They're all friends of somewhat, you know, they're all you know, competing companies, but really it's an old boys club, you're all, you're all mates, yada, yada, yada. And someone talks about memes and crypto and they go, look guys, you all hate crypto, you all think memes are rubbish, I do too, but there's a way that all of us can make money here, right? This table of VCs, you combine have 
10 billion in AUM, like this whole room, every table here is a VC. You've all got billions to play, right? Here's what we should do. We should act as a pack of wolves, not a single wolf. We need to be a pack of wolves and we can play the shit out of the retail market. What we will do is we'll, we'll pay some creative um, agency to come up with a, a silly caricature, a meme, a weird willy, wh whatever it may be, a silly animal wearing a hat. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> And we'll do loads of focus groups. You know, it only costs a you know hundred grand. We'll do a bunch of focus groups of what would you know sing in you know with Gen Z and and the, the typical crypto degen. And what we're going to do is we're going to you know we'll, we'll pick Ethereum or Solana, something that where something where memes boom, or even the Coinbase base. And we are going to pump the shit out of it. And every one of us, we're going to let's say we'll, we'll put in a pot. We'll all put 10 million in, right? Let's raise a 100 million marketing fund. And in that 100 million marketing fund, we're going to pay every YouTuber shiller that we can find. We're going to do driven ads. We're going to do adverts. We'll do everything, right? This little, this little pocket change marketing fund will just pump the shit out of whatever. But we'll do one at a time, OK? So we'll create WIF or whatever X coin, and we're going to launch it. Now, we've got to be careful. We've got to be clever here, right? Because the crypto retail lot, they're getting smarter. They know, you know, wallet distribution, so we've got to spread our load, right? Um, we, you know, Joe Bloggs over there, he's an AI expert. He's got a, a script that can create 100,000 brand new fresh wallets, all with different wallet sizes. And so we can act as like, I don't know, 200,000 retail crypto people. We can all put in like 10, 20 grand roughly across maybe, I don't know, a million different wallets all completely non-linked to us, OK? Are you all in? Yep, yeah, you're all in. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Pass the hat around, put 100 million in. Cool, nice. So <clears throat> we then launch X bullshit coin. And in the first month, it goes from zero to, I don't know, $100 million market cap or $500 million market cap. And then we keep on pumping it. And our, our, our clever marketing social media uh, whiz kids over there, they'll tell us when real real um, people come in, OK? Because we'll know all the 100,000 wallets that we own. So once we get, let's say, 10, 20,000 wallets, which are brand new, fresh wallets, we'll start dumping. Yeah? Cool. You cannot possibly tell me that that conversation doesn't happen. It may not be in a massive summit like that, but it could just be a group of 10 people. Like, I, I was at Hedge Week last week, and that was a, a room of 150 hedge fund managers. There was hundreds of billions of dollars of AUM there. And you can't possibly say that maybe five or six of them didn't go for dinner afterwards and go, you know, chat about work and stuff like that. And I've been at many private dinners. And you know, these conversations happen all the time. So and unfortunately, I can't prove this. I can't. Because these scripts, you know, they create all those different wallets. Um, but you know, <clears throat> when you put your mind in their sort of sh shenanigan shenaniganery boots. That's not even a word. If you put your mind in their boots and figure out how they would do it, like you can sort of see the, the, the trail of breadcrumbs left behind. Um, and it doesn't, as I said, different varying uh, scales. Like you don't have to be a massive bunch of VCs to do this. If you had a million pounds or a million dollars, you yourself could pump the shit out of a coin and dump on your bag, dump your bags on the retail, just like that coin fashion of that KOL person. Um, <clears throat> and I've seen this firsthand. Like, you know, Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. Um, and like, I, I could have done this myself with stuff. Like, when I went, or when we, as RT, went into Tao Inu and Zappi, like we both took it from low hundred thousand dollar market cap to twenty million dollar market cap, fifty or thirty million dollar market cap in what a month? Realistically speaking, re the realistic trader community took Tao Inu from nothing to twenty thirty million in like that. Now I still have all my bags. I didn't dump on anyone. I've, I'm underwater with a lot of the the, the, the buying cohorts that I did. But and I, I'm saying yeah. But so. You have you know, good actors and bad actors, and I, pro I, I can't promise anything. But I would put a lot of money that a lot of these new memes that are booming are not retail-driven grassroots. They are highly coordinated pump and dumps. 
the game just gets bigger. Con artists just get more sophisticated when there's sufficient amounts of eyeballs and attention. But let's say you insist on gambling in this market. <laughs> what I want to do is at least arm you with the necessary information so you don't get wrecked. And <clears throat> like online, typically, I'm, I'm seen as very conservative. You know, I'm not a, a meme coin dabbler. But this is, again, this is not my first rodeo. I've been playing and gambling with meme coins since 2017. And I've done many meme coin pumps. Like, uh, as in, I've ridden quite a lot of meme coins. I made a lot with Shiba Inu back in 2021. Um, and then obviously the rebasing DAOs, which really is a meme. They're all memes, <laughs> effectively. So as far as RT con is concerned, this isn't our first meme rodeo. Uh, I just, I have a very dim view on meme coins. However, I've got, what, 13, 14 points which should at least insulate you from some catastrophe. So, point one. First of all, you need to identify the ecosystem that's at least e meme friendly. At the moment, it's either ERC20 or Sol. So if you're gonna buy a meme coin, it needs to be an ERC20 one or, or Sol. There's more momentum and eyeballs on Sol at the moment, and plus, the. I mean, who wants to pay $20 gas fees every time you buy $10 worth of a meme coin? Like, like, Ethereum absolutely sucks. So if you're going to be buying some meme coins, you know, just focus on the Sol ecosystem. <clears throat> Number two, everyone has different limits, okay? So this is my personal filter. Some people only look for meme coins between 500k and a million dollar market cap, but I think you're playing with fire there. Um, so for me, if I'm going to be buying a meme coin, I, I filter my deck screener and I will only look at crypto that are above $10 million market cap. And that's because if you were to look at the vast, if you took, uh, got a big list of memes that did rug pulls, m a huge majority of that will be coins below $5 million or coins below $10 million. So you are filtering most rug pulls if you, if you look at 10 million above. Because it means it's got going, it's probably had a couple of pump and dumps, it's getting more traction. Uh, but obviously that one metric on its own isn't enough. So as I said, it will el eliminate most rugs. One other point which I actually just come to my head, which isn't in the slides, is I would also look at the, the contract and the LP. So I like memes where they, the community have renounced the contract, so there's no single dev that could rug pull you, and also if they've burnt the LP or they've locked in the LP. So as in the liquidity pool within Uniswap or whatever decks that you're playing with. So if they've renounced the contract and the liquidity pool is burnt or locked, you cannot be rug pulled. So you know, have those two metrics plus above $10 million market cap. It's a good starting point, okay? You're not gonna get the, the 100,000 X you know, by buying a coin at 200K market cap and it goes to whatever. But you, know, you wanna have an, a modicum of safety if you're going to engage in this Casino, okay? This is a casino. Treat it as such. Yeah, as I said, memes that have. Re so here's the easiest way to spot a VC backed meme coin or a fund backed meme coin is when it goes from zero to like $200 million market cap in the opening week. Do you really think there's 200, like, there's enough retail to self coordinate into one meme coin in a week to push it up to 200 million? No. No. Um, so <clears throat> you've got to be the remora fish. You look at any big shark, there's a bunch of fish leeching off of it. Just, yeah, be the remora fish. Just suck onto that great white and swim with it. Um, <clears throat> tech is absolutely irrelevant. It really is. It's same in crypto full stop. Like, Casper is the world's leading proof of work coin. It's broken so many records. Um, <laughs> But if you look at the price action, it's rather lackluster. And it's the same in tech full stop. Like, no one gives a shit about tech these days. If you have the best tech, you're not necessarily going to win. It's, it's all about who gets the most attention. Um, I mean, Casper will still do well, but it, yeah, tech is irrelevant. Silliness or revenge is typically what drives <laughs> memes. And I came across the wildest video. Just watch this. Oh, thanks. Wait, what? He said, wait, wait, what? I'm so confused. What? Oh, yo, it's nuked. Why is it nuked? No way. 
Oh. Holy fuck! Holy fuck! You full clip. Holy fuck, thanks for the 20 bandos. Oh, yeah, he did. Oh, oh. Yo, 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 what the fuck? What the fuck? No, 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 bro. So what happened is this 13 or 15 year old kid launched a brand new shitcoin, launched it, sold it, like pumped it to his followers, and then rug pulled everyone. When, it hit, when he hit 30K profit, $30,000 profit, he rug pulled his whole audience. And that was live footage of him rug pulling everyone, going, yeah, giving the fingers. <clears throat> Gen Z quant. That was the that was the shit coin. Okay, but what does crypto Twitter do? They want revenge. <laughs> oh, this is brutal. This kid rugged a coin for thirty thousand dollars. They doxed him and found his school, <clears throat> and they sent the coin to thirty-five million dollar market cap. So his original coins would have been worth over a million dollars. <laughs> And now this kid's <laughs> reputation is gone forever in crypto. N will anyone ever trust this kid again? No. Now, he could actually end up turning into a nice person, because you do make silly mistakes when you're younger. But you can see there's an innate level of shittiness within his character. Would you not say? <laughs> um, I can't imagine, like, Luca is a, like, he's your age, actually. I couldn't ever imagine Lucas doing that. Like, he's, he's a really nice guy. I was going to say kid, but you're not a kid. You're... Sorry. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, he has very good morals and character. Like, he, who would not do that? So, sometimes, they're just shit people around the world. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't like news cycle memes. Um, they sprout and die as very quickly. So something will happen on the news, maybe a hundred or a thousand shit coins will, will, will be born because of that, and then they'll die very quickly. Do not touch news cycle memes. If you want to ask for pain, that is that, okay? Um, and here's a real example. Um, I've, I've obscured the, 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 obviously who this was. This was a Facebook message I had relatively recently, 17th of October. In on a shitcoin launch, if you fancy a gamble, let me know. Did he did it? I was like, oh dear God. <laughs> <laughs> I've always had my, this criteria, right? And I, the moment he said, like, the, by the way, the moment I got this message on Facebook from this person, I was like, oh dear, what now? Then, uh, then my fears were confirmed. <laughs> And so obviously I've got this and I said, ha, not for me, I'm afraid. Diddy will be out of the news cycle soon. Also, the wallet distribution isn't ideal. And then, because I just did a quick look on the wallet distribution and it was shit. Um, I don't like being mean. And I said, I really hope you didn't buy that Diddy coin, mate. This will only go to zero. As it was, you know, this was like a day late, oh, a few days later when I actually looked at it properly. And this is the chart now. <laughs> Flatline. So that's price, by the way. So it's literally flatlined. Um, because it's a new cycle thing, right? Who, like, give it a couple of months, no one will give a shit about Diddy. I still want to see the Epstein list, though. And I want to see the Diddy list. I want to see the Epstein and the Diddy list. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're quite over -murred. Yeah, they're quite, yeah. Anyway. Um, ah, OK, this is the same person. <sighs> Now stuck between a rock and a hard place, he's launched a new coin. So he's launched a shit coin to get him out of the shit situation that he did, got in with Diddy. That is the shit coin. I've blocked out. I don't want to dox this person. We need an investor, spelled incorrectly. Um, sorry, I'm a bit of a stickler for S uh, SPG. This was the 12th of November, so it wasn't that far long ago. Yeah, hard pass for me, mate. This is all the back alley type shit uh, stuff of crypto I stay out of. Uh, yeah, good luck, blah, blah, blah. And so, yeah, if when people approach, and by the way, I've had many people approach me with shit like this. You just, just do a hard pass, okay? You don't want to look over your shoulder in crypto because this shit will be following. This is a shit magnet, this person. 
he will always be in shit because, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, the website he launched, and what it was a really good website, um, is very convincing, but no. Nah. Um, and also, he took what I said about the wallet distributions, and the wallet distributions of his shitcoin were actually very good. I was like, geez, you're a fast learner. You are a fast scammer. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Because I, I straight away went to look, you know, check, I checked it out, and I was like, ah, oh, okay, you're, I'm effectively teaching him how to be a better scammer by, give, by giving him the reasons why I don't like it. <laughs> anyway, number six, wallet distribution is critical, but scammers and ruggers are cottling onto this, like the previous person. Um, this was the Diddy one when I saw it. Um, eight per oh, I, can't, I can't remember what that was, but this is quite concentrated. So, and what you'll find is that the people that are big in an uh, early and big in a coin, they won't have one wallet. They all have lots of wallets. So, if you like, for example, m myself with Tao Inu and Zappy, I don't have one wallet. I've got, I, I've probably got about fifteen wallets in each. So, if you were to look at, like, uh, yeah, so. <clears throat> One of the things is, if you have a lot of wallets with a, roughly the same amount of figures, that's most likely one person. Because people are lazy when they're, when they're splitting wallets. They're like, oh, uh, let's divide it in four. Boom, 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 boom. That, that happens a lot. Um, like, so, yeah. Anyway, that wallet distribution isn't good. Ideally, you'd like it so you'll always see big chunks with you know, exchanges or if it's, uh, stuff has been burned or whatnot. But really, when you start looking at the private wallets, you'd like it, you know, 1% or less, okay? You don't really want massive, massive wells that can just dump on you. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, this was too high for my personal liking. Also, the number of holders in a shitcoin is quite crucial. And again, this is something I learned with Tawinu and Zappi. Um, I got into that, obviously, very early. But one of the flaws that they have at the moment is that they're very low in holders. You know, Zappi's probably only got, what, 2,000 holders. Tao Inu's only got three and a half, four thousand 4,000 users. I haven't actually checked in ages. But it's, it's very low, and, it's, too, and it's, it's below the critical mass threshold number. For, for a meme to really pop, you need at least 10,000, really. Um, and so on deck screener, as part of your um, criteria that you can filter, look for um, more than 10,000 holders. And the way that you check that, so this is Dex Screener. You can go onto any old coin. This is Taonu. On the bottom left, you go down here where it says Taonu, and you can click the thing that says EXP. That will open up the, the Block Explorer. You click that, and it will take you to the Block Explorer. Now, oh, here's, here's another. This is a cash grab. Not, I wouldn't say it's a scam. But there was a, a Tau miner, a bit tensor miner, that reached out to me and said, hey, I like what you did with Tau Inu, Siam. Um, I want to launch Tau Inu on Solana. Can you back that? And I was like, no. This hell freaking no. Because uh, not only does it dilute attention from the actual Tau Inu, which is on Ethereum, it, it just creates confusion because you've now got two Tau Nu tickers and then people, new investors won't know which one to buy. I was like, no, don't do it. It's, if you're a fan of Tau Inu and, and BitTensor, don't do this, because this is a net um, negative action to do. Anyway, he went and did it, and I said, look, and if you do it, it will crash and die. I, I promise you it will. No one will adopt it. No one in BitTensor or Tau Inu uh, community will adopt it. This, is a, this will just be a cash grab. I, I always speak my mind, so he doesn't speak to you anymore. Um, I tend to piss off a lot of people, but so be it. So anyway, this is Tau Inu on Solana, the one I said not to do. Um, look at the price. Look at the pump and dump. Cash grab, cash grab, die. It, it's, yeah. So when you look at the Tau Inu on Solana on the Block Explorer, you, it opens this up. It only has 1,000 users. So he actually did well to get 1,000 users. You then click holders, and this is what you get. So half of the supply is locked up on Radium, which is the DEX, uh, decentralized exchange. Then you got, look, again, this is not good. You have one guy that has 5% of the supply. Uh, and then, yeah, and you, you, we don't know. This person probably has m more of these wallets. You don't know. Um, but again, it's still too high. It needs to be really like around, you know, ideally less than 1%. OK. 
because then you know, you're, if you're in a meme, you, you're effectively joining a cult. Again, I agree with what Murad says. These are crypto cults that you're joining, and you want a cult where there's lots of people, and so th there's no big whales that can dump on you. Avoid copycats. They basically never win. There's one or two copycats that have done well. Um, <clears throat> like uh, Shiba Inu is a copycat of Doge, isn't it? SHIB did really well. But again, survivorship bias. Most copycats don't do well. So if it's a derivative of a, of a meme, just nah. Um, what is this one? This is WIF on Sol. Again, WIF was launched on Ethereum, I believe. I, didn't, I never touched WIF. WIF was one that just went up and I just, I wasn't even aware of it. But then guess what? People wanted to do a cash grab and launch WIF on Solana. Pump and dump. And again, another couple of pump and dumps, but it's not going to do well. So if a, if a meme launches on an ecosystem, don't invest in it on another ecosystem. You've got to stay on the one it launched on. Again, most of the time. <clears throat> so, yeah. Again, the memes that you hear of, Doge and Shib and Bonk and all that, they are survivorship bias, but just for crypto. So, um, yeah, much wow. 10, historically, um, the main, ha. Huh. So this is the slide where I'm not sure on, because I'm starting to question myself with this, because historically, that's why I put it in yellow, memes within the main cycle narrative are the ones that go nuts, right? Um, so if you go back to, I you know, 2017, um, the main cycle narrative was smart contract. Ethereum was just bought, you know, launched the DAP platform. And so you had, you know, memes that are based off Ethereum. You know, Doge, oh no, not Doge, Shib, Shiba Inu was effectively, a, I would say, a meme of Ethereum-ish. Um, but maybe, that was, maybe, maybe that's an old rule. Um, looking at what are, a lot of the, the memes are doing at the moment, it's not necessarily anything to do with, or in fact, there's nothing to do with AI. This cycle is AI narrative, and so far I don't see really any AI meme coins going nuts. So I could, I'm happy to say I, I could be wrong with this, this slide, but this is what's historically been the case. And this is, re, this is why I got into Tao Inu and Zappi. Um, so the cycle narrative is AI. I believe BitTensor Tao will be the main liquidity, like gravity well um, for it. Uh, and therefore, I want memes based off BitTensor. Shit, it's lunch. Um, <clears throat> 11, stay away from new projects. Perhaps put a filter in of at least three months. You want to get the pump and dump out of the way. There's nearly, all, no, not nearly always. There is always a pump and dump in every shit meme coin, every coin. So if you wait at least three months or have a filter of only looking at coins above $10 million market cap, older than three months, nice wallet distribution on Solana or Ethereum, then you're at least putting some... Uh, success probabilities behind your sales there. 12, some have been, an, most have been animal based, but it looks like more movement based. There's another meme that I, that ran away, which I wasn't aware of, which is SPX 6900. Is it, Harry's more, into, yeah. Um, I mean, that's huge now in terms of market cap, but that is a cult movement. They want uh, the absurdity of that meme coin having a bigger market cap than the actual S&P 500. So I actually, I, I completely get that. And I think it probably will do that just because, you know, as Elon says, the most ironic and entertaining outcome is normally the outcome that happens. Number 13, avoid any celebrity endorsed meme because they've been paid a shitload of tokens to meme that shit. You know, all the Logans are doing that and yeah, just avoid the celebrity ones and spread your load if you're gonna do this. Um, don't just go all in on one meme. That's literally like going to the, the post office and buying one lottery ticket. Um, just, yeah, you need to buy a lot. Oh, no, no, no. If, you, <laughs> so, no, no. if, if you're going to do this, buy 10, OK? 10 calculated plays using the criteria. Um, and, you know, RT has been around for 10 and a half years now. And I've done a lot of like these money challenges. And <laughs> touch wood, they've all worked. Um, like back in the 2020, 2017, 2021 cycles, I did like the 0.1 Bitcoin to t 1 Bitcoin challenges. And I did that a few times over. Com like basically started with 0.1 Bitcoin, went into memes and shitcoins and tr heavily traded up to a, a Bitcoin. 
then cycled out and, and stuff. Um, was it a couple of years ago? Did 10k to 200k. That that worked pretty well. And recently, I'm in another money challenge at the moment, um, where in fact I've got a slide here. In September, I funded a Mexi derivatives trading account with 195k. You can see I, I did it in a couple of tranches. Um, the first trade I actually placed in August, but the, the challenge was is I, I was going to turn 200k, rough, or roughly 200k, into a million in, in a short period of time. So that was in September, 9th of September-ish. That 200k or 195k is now 530k. So that's done well in two months, pretty much. So I'm going to keep on. And this is just no, not meme coins. This is just trading. This is what we're doing in RT. Um, so hopefully, wait, who's been following these trades and copying those trades? One person, is that it? <laughs> Are you, you must be up as well then. I am up in the um, Swan trade, which obviously I got. I, you got, I, uh, yeah. I, I, I support, obviously, yeah. Nice. Just one person's copying these trades? I think the okay. Phil trade. The Phil, oh, that, yeah, that popped up this morning, I think. So um, yeah, anyway, so that's still going. Um, so I'm now going to do another challenge, just for shits and giggles. I'm going to do the 100K to 1 million challenge, but just shitty meme coins. OK? So on Monday, I'm going to buy 100,000 pounds worth of meme coins. And God help me. I mean, Elon help me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Ellie, this is the first time Ellie's heard of this. <laughs> So I've got lots of different point, uh, pots. This will not be part of my private equity firm pot. This will not be the hedge fund pot. This is our own personal money. <laughs> <laughs> not help me, God, help me, honey. <laughs> so, so I'm going to be putting 100 grand of my own personal money into shit coins. And I'm going to heavily trade that up to a million. And I'm going to buy 10, maybe 10 or 12 shit coins. Knowing the law of averages, a bunch will die, a bunch will do maybe a 2 or 3x, one is most likely going to 50x, and when you average it out, I'm pretty sure we'll hit a million pretty far, uh, quickly. On Thursday, the trading pub this Thursday, I will be going through this deep dive, I'll show you exactly what I've bought uh, and how I've bought it, and yeah, so I will fully dox my accounts. That video will not go on YouTube, so <laughs> I'm not sharing the world with that, but RT, you guys can follow if you, if you want. So long story short, most will lose. Um, know that this is a casino. Uh, treat it as such. We are just going to Grovena Casino to have a bit of a flirt. Don't have more than 10% of your pot in, in memes. So <clears throat> yeah. Like, even though I'm putting 100 grand in, that's not 10%. It would be, it's a much lower percentage. So I'm happy to have a bit of a flirt. Because if it all goes to zero, I will, I will laugh at myself. Don't worry. Um, and it's a great learning experience. Just, yeah. I mean, you could say in your own take profits. If a, if a coin hits 50x, take profit. I don't know. It, it, it's, it's your call. I'll show you on Thursday what I'm doing. Um, it's going to be a bit of a degen trading pub.